Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Primal Liquid, and since you all seem to love these soul destroying grinds, here's another one for you. So, remember to hit that like button and leave a comment as it really does help tremendously. So, this time we're breaking the heck out of Final Fantasy X. Now, everybody knows about things like mix being broken, stat maxing, ridiculously fast XP grinding, and some really great armor and weapon customizing. But these all come towards the end of the game. Now, that's too late for us. So, how about how overpowered you can get before Shiva? The answer? Well, it depends on your sanity mostly, but let's jump into it and see. Okay, so right off the bat, during the game's tutorial in Xanarkand, we're going to get some overdrive modes for Tidus. And yes, I'm going to say Tidus instead of Tidus, because Tidus sounds stupid. Specifically though, Slayer and Loner. This is best done here for one simple reason. The monsters are infinitely spawning, and they never attack you. So, kill Aronoff by attacking him yourself, so only Tidus is left alive. Next, proceed to attack the Sin Scales at the back, and keep doing this until you kill 100 of them to learn Slayer. After 60 turns, you will get Loner. So once you get Loner, you know you're halfway there for Slayer. Next up is when you regain control in the ruins, equip Tidus with the overdrive mode Loner. The next few battles Tidus fights alone, after all, and we want to get some overdrive UCs, because Tannis' overdrive is called Swordplay, which is broken down into four attacks, Spiral Cut, Slice and Dice, Energy Rain, and finally Blitz Ace. At the start, you only have Spiral Cut, and in order to unlock the rest, we need Tidus to use his Overdrive 10 times for Slice and Dice, 30 times for Energy Rain, and a total of 80 times for Blitz Ace. You can get two UCs against the fish coming up, and a couple more against the Spider Boss. Once all this is done though, you're on the boat with Riku. Change Tidus' overdrive mode back to Slayer. Next, keep battling in the ocean. The main goal here is to steal grenades and get Tidus to learn Slice and Dice. Once you have your new overdrive, it's time to continue the story. When the party leaves Besaid, re-enter and talk to the shopkeep. Sell all your potions and grenades here for some gil and exit the menu. When you speak to the shopkeep and exit the menu after leaving the village for the first time, she will mention about her dog digging something up recently. Now head into the top right tent and speak to the dog to get a second overdrive for Veilfer called Energy Blast. This is stronger than Energy Rate and also the only second overdrive any Aeon can get. Okay, now leave the village proper and continue along the path doing all the tutorial battles at the end. Uh, when you get to the beach, save the game and go back two screens to the long path where you got all the tutorial battles. Now you can start encountering normal random battles here. And the goal is simple. Get haste for Tidus, which requires 10 sphere levels. After grinding the grenades out, you should already have 3 to 4 levels though, so this shouldn't take too long. Once you get haste, go back to the beach, speak to all the residents for some items, and then board the boat. Now comes the real grind. The boss battle aboard the SS Licky has three Sin Scales and Sin's Fin. Now, these Sin Scales are infinitely spawning, meaning we can farm them for XP, Gil, and some items. Make sure Yuna and Lulu each get a turn during the battle by just having them defend. Once that's done, swap them out for Kimari and Waka. Use Tidus to cast haste on himself while Kimari and Waka just attack normally. Next, get Tidus to use Cheer five times to boost everybody's attack to the maximum increase. Then use haste and uh, sorry, use haste on Waka and Kimari. With haste and five cheers, we can one-shot the Sin Scales, and our characters will be fast enough that the Sin Scales never get a turn, meaning we can never die. You can do this without haste, however, the Sin Scales will get turns and they can attack you, meaning it's possible to get a game over. Hence, I always pick it up. Now, these Sin Scales give 2 XP normally, and 3 if you overkill them, which means you're going to get between 6 and 9 XP per set of Sin Scales. 
you can kill 16 sets in one minute with the speed up booster activated which is 96 xp per minute so for an hour that would be 5760 xp or more depending on how many overkills you get now if you're on console just divide these numbers by four to account for not having access to the booster now, what I normally do here is learn Blitz Ace for Titus, and thanks to his Slayer Overdrive mode, he gets to use an Overdrive every 5 sets of Sin Scales, which means you need a total of 400 sets of Sin Scales to get 80 Overdrive UCs. However, you already have 10 because of learning Slice and Dice, so you only need 70 UCs. Now, if you stop right after learning Blitz Ace, you will earn about 3000 XP. However, getting Blitz Ace is just the start of this grind for me. If you have a turbo controller, then brilliant, just use that and a rubber band on it to infinitely farm this fight for you with no input from yourself. If you don't, then just mass X for a few hours while watching a movie. Typically, I'll either leave this going overnight, or if I start in the early hours of the morning, I'll let it go all day. The end result? Far oh, too many levels for this point of the game. So. Kill the fin when you're done and enjoy your new levels and completely over the top amount of gill. The clip you're watching now is from 4 hours of grinding. However, leave it on overnight and you get these levels with this amount of gill. If you use the 4x booster. Without the booster you would need about 45 hours to get these levels give or take. Now this is really important, send Kimari down towards Riku's path and don't use any more of his levels yet. Likewise for Unit I would suggest getting Kikura and then stopping there for the time being. As for Waka, Lulu and Tidus, feel free to use them all. With 99 levels we can get Tidus all the way to the end of his grid. Same with Waka and Lulu is one level away from Flare if you get Demi. If you ignore Demi, however, you can get Flare, and there's nothing like Flare in Killika Forest. So, in terms of stats, this is all characters before 99 levels are used, and then this is after, where at the very sorry, we're at the very start of the game, but we're now strong enough to completely destroy everything the story can throw at us, including all the final bosses. Chances are though, you can't use all these levels because of running out of spheres though, so don't worry about using all these levels just yet. Next up in Kilika, fight the boss Lord Ochu in the forest and make sure to overkill him for either 2 HP spheres or 2 MP spheres. Now these are the highest tier of spheres which give 300 HP and 40 MP respectively per use. I personally prefer the MP spheres. Now, on the boat to Luka, make sure to get the jack shot during the trip, as it's going to come in handy once you're in Luka and ha uh, sorry, once you're in Luka and have control. Go to the main front desk area where the save point is and head out the right side of the area. Head to the end of the pier here to find two chests for a magic sphere and a HP sphere. Like before, the magic sphere is the highest tier, which gives plus four to the stat. Next, make sure to win the Blitzball game against the Luka Goers for a Strauss Sphere, as I'm sure you're aware now, it's a plus four to the stat. Okay, continue on. Enjoy the lovely laughing scene and prepare to lose your soul here. Anywho, as I'm sure you can imagine, it's time for Blitzball. Now, we want to set it up first. Open the Blitzball game menu and check the league prizes. You want Teleport Sphere as the first place prize and Return Sphere as the top scorer prize at the same time. If they are not there, then go down and hit Reset Data. Once reset, the league prizes change. Do this until you get the one with them together. Next, save the game. Go back into Luca and recruit Jumal, sitting on the bench in the centre of town near the pub. Recruit Wedge, who is standing just above the main reception desk. And then head right one screen and recruit Zev Ronso. Just hire them for 10 games, because when we reset data for the next leagues, we lose these guys from our team and have to rehire them. Now, these are going to be used in your team, and the order from top to bottom for your team will be Tidus, Wedge, Zevronso, Zasu, Botter, 
and Jamal. There are other good players we can get, however, because of all the resetting we will do, just keep Jasu and Botta as they are good enough at these low levels. Now, you could proceed to spend the next 1000 hours here if you really wanted to, however, nobody is really that daft. I don't think so, anyway. So, please don't go for 99 Dark Masters here. Anyway, the items we want to get from Blitzball are Return Spheres, which are a top scorer prize, and Teleport Spheres, which are a League's first place finish prize. And if you wanted to, you could also get level 1 Key Spheres, Dark Matters, as well as Mega Elixirs. I don't think they're worth it though, because this is going to take stupidly long time as it stands just for the Teleport and Return Spheres. Complete the League and make sure you win and have the top scorer on your team. You can have more than one top scorer at the same time as well though. For example, if Tidus has 13 goals and is the top scorer, you win a Return Sphere. If Wedge also has 13 goals, you win two Return Spheres, one for each character because they share first place. You could technically do this with your whole team, but it becomes harder the more you try to get, so two at a time is a nice comfortable target. Now you want to get at least 6 Teleport Spheres and 8 Return Spheres. If you always win the 2 Return Spheres though, then you should end up with 12 after you get 6 Teleports. So, how long does this take? Well, the short answer is way too long. The long answer is way, way, way too long. If you include downtime for menuing and intermission of matches, a single match takes about 13 minutes. A league has 10 matches and we need at least 6 leagues, which translates to about 13 hours. If you keep winning the matches though, then you should have such a far lead on points that you should be able to just forfeit the last 2-3 to three matches and still place first though, saving 20-30 to 30 minutes a league or about 3 hours overall. We're still not done though. It's time to get Walkers, Overdrives and Siegel from Blitzball now. At the save point, save the game and then enter Blitzball menu again and if the tournament is greyed out, back out of the menu completely and re-enter it. Do this until a tournament starts. For the first tournament, the prize should always be attack reels, Walkers second overdrive. Win that and then save the game. Now on Meehan High Road, just win a casual 250 battles. For this step, Walker may need to be in the party. I found conflicting reports that he does or doesn't need to be there for these fights, so I suggest using him just to be safe. Now, once you have done those battles and because you already have attack reels, the next first place league prize will be his third overdrive, status reels. So do another 10 league matches to win that and save the game. Now, time for another 200 battles to take us up to a total of 450 battles. And because we have status reels, the next tournament prize will be Auroch Reels, Walker's final overdrive. However, his best overdrive to actually use would be Attack Reels, so yay for wasted time I guess. Finally, once you have Auroch Reels, you have a 50% chance of the league having his Jupiter Sigil, uh, Siegel as the first place prize. So, might as well win that while we're here, I guess. And we're finally done with Blitzball. Told you, it takes too long, didn't I? Now, what if you truly, truly went crazy and decided to go for 99 Teleport Spheres? 99 return spheres, 99 mega elixirs, 99 dark matters, 99 underdog secrets, 99 free stars, 99 lux spheres, and 11 level 1 key spheres. How long would that take? Well, keep in mind all these prizes are league first place prizes apart from return spheres, which comes to a grand total of 605 leagues. That's 6,050 matches, which works out at just a casual 1,311 hours, or roughly 55 days straight, with no breaks for food, drink, toilet, or sleep. And just as a point of reference for how bad of an idea it is to do this, in the same amount of time, you can do roughly 
15 100% playthroughs with perfect sphere grids with all Dark Aeons and Penance defeated in each playthrough. So just stick to the 18 hours or so for 6 teleport spheres and walkers overdrives plus battles on top, okay? Anyway, time to continue. Once you get to the Chocobo Eater boss, you need to be careful. Not because you have a chance of dying, but because we don't actually want to kill the Eater. We need to push him off a cliff. And so at this point, what I suggest doing is use Tidus to attack, Lulu casting fire magic at lower levels, Walker attacking at higher levels, and have Yuna constantly healing the Chocobo Eater to keep him alive while we knock him off. Doing this gives you two level 1 key spheres, which we're going to use to get Kimari over to Riku's path to unlock Steel and Juice. Next up, have Tidus, Yuna and Waka use Teleport Spheres to go over and get both skills. Finally, use the HP, MP, Magic and Strength Spheres here and get all four characters to activate them. Then have Yuna, Tidus and Waka use Return Spheres to return back to their own routes if they have not already completed them. Have Kimari start heading down Riku's path for Mug. And once he learns it, have Tidus and Waka use Teleport Spheres to learn that as well. And then return them back to their own routes again. Finally, use a Return Sphere to take Kimari back to the level 2 node next to Steel and Use, because we're going to send him down to unlock Holy at Mokalania. From now, next to the level 2 uh, lock node, he needs 38 levels to reach Holy, so keep that in mind. However, there's going to be a grind in Thunder Plains anyway. So, like how we're getting Steel, Use and Morg though, when Lulu gets access to her raw spells or Gar spells if you really went overboard on the Leaky, get Yuna to use the final Teleport Sphere to learn those spells. If you manage to get her Gar spells, continue along the path and pick up Flare as well. Once this is done, use the Return Sphere to send her back. Once Yuna has the black magic, you can use the rest of her sphere levels. So, why do we do this? Well, Yuna has higher agility and a higher magic stat than Lulu, which means she's actually a better black mage. Hence, giving her access to these spells means she does a lot more damage, especially with all the grinding we have done. How does it feel to be doing 9,999 damage on Meehan? Pretty good, right? Well, we're not done yet either. Next up is Jose Temple. Like before with Veilfer and Ifrit, make sure to finish the temple using the Destruction Sphere for the Treasure Reward, which this time is another Magic Sphere, which Yuna and Kimari can both benefit from once you get a level 2 Key Sphere. Now, it's straightforward all the way to Guadas Alarm, and Riku teaches you how to customise weapons and armour. For example, you can give a weapon first strike by using a Return Sphere. If you decide to go completely crazy with Blitzball, you can use 20 Mega Elixirs to get double AP on a weapon. 30 Underdog Secrets will give you double overdrive. 99 Dark Matters can give you Ribbon on an armour, making you immune to everything except Curse. Likewise, 60 Dark Matters can give you break damage limits on a weapon. And finally, 20 free stars can give you the ability to get 1 MP on a weapon. So all your skills only cost 1 MP. I suggest just sticking to first strike though, because chances are you didn't get the other items. I hope anyway. Next, in the Thunder Plains, pray to the cactus statues to sort out its dialogue. Words. Words are hard. Pray to the cactus statues to start spawning them and gain the ability to fight them. Pray to three statues so you can get battles with three characters at once. Fight these until you get MP Stroll on an armor for Kimari and Yuna. Since both of these are going to run out of MP very very fast with Flare for Yuna and Kimari's soon to be holy. MP Stroll restores their MP while you are walking around and unlike other Final Fantasy games with the same ability, in FF10, it actually recharges incredibly fast to the point you will pretty much always start a battle with full MP. Remember to make sure Kimari has at least 38 level ups 
and Thunder Plains is a better than the next area for level grinding, so do it here. Lastly, do some not so fun lightning dodging to get some nice rewards. So 20 dodges gives you 2 MP spheres, 50 dodges gives you 3 strength spheres, and 100 gives you 3 HP spheres. Give the strength to Titus, save MP and HP till later though. Now, the final stretch is Mokalonia Forest. Once you defeat the boss Sphere Morph, make sure to overkill it to get two level two unlock spheres. And with that, use one with Kimari next to Steel and use, and also use the last four Magic Plus Sphere we have here, along with MP spheres and HP spheres. Then, because he has 38 levels remaining at least, we can send him straight through the last half of Yuna's Grid, which contains high-end white magic like Dispel, Kyoriga, and Holy. But also, because it's the end of her grid, there's a lot of plus four nodes as well for magic, agility, and evasion. And with that, we are as strong as possible before Shiva. At least, without doing 1,300 hours of Blitzball. So, we have Kimari doing 9,999 damage with Holy, Yuna and Lulu doing the same damage with Flare, and everybody else about as powerful as you would normally be when fighting the final boss of the game in a normal playthrough. Which means you're going to be one-shotting all normal encounters from here all the way through to Xanakand. Though pretty much with the odd exception of a few enemies. Technically though, you could have enough dark matter to teach break damage limit. Meaning you could technically be strong enough at this point to one-shot everything bar some of the end story bosses. And remember, we're only about a third of the way through the game at this point. We have three Aeons and haven't even fought Seymour yet. Still, there's nothing like a Summoner and her Guardians who are able to completely annihilate Sin pretty much at the very start of her pilgrimage. With all that said though everybody, I'm sorry this video was quite long, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. So, remember to leave a like and a comment down below letting me know if I taught you something you didn't know in this video. And make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified about all my future videos. Like my next overpowered video, which will be the good old Final Fantasy VII. And if you want to help support the channel, consider becoming a member or using my Amazon affiliate link, both of which are down in the description below. As always though, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.